most organizations are communicating from the outside in. Bless you. Um, let me give you an example. I, I'm just going to use Apple because it's like the low-hanging fruit. Everyone gets it. There's probably 50% of you have iPhones in the room. So if Apple were like everybody else, a piece of marketing, some communication from them would sound something like this. Uh, here we go. We make great computers. They're beautifully designed, thoughtfully engineered, and easy to use. Want to buy one? Right? And, and that's how we communicate. We communicate, you know, we tell people what we do. We say how we do it. You know, here's our, here's our new gym. We've got the best equipment. We've got the widest range of classes and the, the most qualified trainers. Come join our gym. Here's our, here's our MBA program. We've got the finest faculty. Our students are from all over the world, and they achieve the greatest level of salary increase after they graduate. Come enroll at our MBA program. I mean, that's how we typically communicate. We go from the clearest to the fuzziest. But the best organizations, this is where the pattern comes in, the best organizations, the, the organizations and individuals who are able to inspire, flip it. They actually communicate from the inside out. So I'll just use, again, Apple, just an example because everyone gets it. So how does Apple actually communicate? How Apple actually communicates is they start with why. What they say is everything we do we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in the power of technology to empower individuals. We believe in thinking different. How do we do that? We do that by making products that are beautifully designed, thoughtfully engineered, and easy to use. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? It's totally different, right? Like, it actually feels different. Doesn't it feel, it sounds different. Now you're ready to buy a computer from me. And what this proves is that people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. When you start with the what, you're not talking to the part of the brain that controls decision making. None of this is my opinion. It's all based in the tenets of biology. If you take a cross section of the human brain and look from the top down, you'll see that the brain is divided into three major regions. And they correspond with the golden circle, our three layers here. The outer region, the outer portion, our neocortex, our newest brain, this is the brain that corresponds with the what level. This is the part of the brain that's responsible for all analytical thought and rational thought, and language. Now the middle portions, these correspond to our limbic brain. This is like our lizard brain, our old brain, our brain that's been around longer than our neocortex. And so this brain, that's the part of our brain, our, our old brain, our lizard brain. This is the part of the brain that controls and is responsible for all of our emotions, like trust and loyalty. It also drives all behavior, all decision making, and has no capacity for language. As a consequence, when we communicate from the outside in, in other words, we talk about what we do and how we do it and why we think we're different, yes, people can understand vast quantities of information. They can onboard uh, all the facts and figures and benefits and features. They can, all of the data, it just doesn't drive decision making, it just doesn't drive behavior. That's why you can tell people, and I'm sure as a coach you've had this experience, you can show someone all of the rational arguments of the world of why they should do something a certain way, and yet still people resist. Think about the leaders that you coach when they're trying to explain something rationally to their teammates, to their team members, to their colleagues. And people are like, well, you know, I understand, but it just doesn't feel right. You ever heard anyone say that? It doesn't feel right? Why would we use that, why would we use that word feel? What do you mean it doesn't feel right? Or we say, you know, follow, follow your heart. 
or listen to your, you know, listen to your soul, or it's a gut decision. Why do we use those words? Those aren't other body parts making decisions, are they? No, it's all happening in the limbic brain. And it's all happening in the limbic brain, the part of our brain that drives, the part of our brain that drives decision-making behavior, but has no capacity for language. So the reason this is important is because when we communicate with the what and the how, it's like we're a commodity. Um, you know, there's, there's ultimately a difference between repeat business and loyalty. If we want people to do business with us again and again, sure, we can focus on the what and the how. But that's what commodities do. There's nothing differentiating there. You think you're different, but, well, someone across the street could come up with the same idea, and now you're no longer different. You know, in the, in the gym example, well, the gym across the street, they've got, you know, they now have the best equipment. They're the newest. So the reason this is important, whether you're an organization trying to market to individuals or whether you're a coach or whether you're a manager or whether you're a leader, is because you want to tap into those feelings. We want people to feel that they trust us. We want people to feel loyal. We want people to, 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 to genuinely believe what they're doing. When people feel safe, when people feel that they're cared for, when we put people first, they will do remarkable things. Trust emerges. They'll give you all that discretionary effort. They'll give you all of their creative juices. They'll, they'll, they'll give you all of that innovation. They'll take risks. They'll explore. They'll innovate. They'll cooperate. What's that expression? It's amazing what you can accomplish when you don't care who gets the credit. When people feel, remember, it's a feeling. When people feel safe, not from the dangers outside, but from the threats inside. When people feel safe, remarkable things happen. So I think everyone here, our job every day as leaders to lead is to make people feel safe. Connect with the why.